glory to Jesus Christ. Glory Our Lord said there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God come in power. And we believe as Orthodox Christians that that is literally true. It has come about. It has come about. Uh, and we believe that in the descent of the Holy Spirit, this, the kingdom of God has come in power. That there is a total difference between before and after Pentecost. Before and after Pentecost, before Pentecost, we knew Jesus just as another man, if I may paraphrase St. Paul, according to the flesh, into literal translation. But now we know him in the Spirit. Before Pentecost, the words of the Lord make very little sense, but in the Holy Spirit they made sense. He said this. He said that when the Spirit comes, you will understand everything that I said, and you will do things that I do, and even more. These are mysterious <coughs> words in the true sense of mystery, which means that we're entering into, into the holy place of God. This is not just ourselves getting a pep talk and being told, like some coach, you can do it. And no, this is something radically different, substantially different, that the coming of the Holy Spirit is the kingdom of God come in power. Because when we are born again through baptism in the Holy Spirit, we are a new creature. The old has passed away. We have gone through death with Christ and we have raised, been raised again in him. So to be an Orthodox Christian, to be in the church, is to be standing in the presence of God. It's to be standing in the Holy Spirit, upright in the presence of God. I might almost say as children who stand and they look up in awe. It's almost like their hand. You remember when you were very small, your hand was held by your parents at a rather uh, extraordinary angle, upright, because you're so small. You know, and that's kind of how it is with us when we stand in church. We are in awe. We're surrounded by these amazing beings, the angels, that we can hardly see. Maybe we can catch a glimpse of them sometimes. We're standing in the presence of the angels. We're standing in the presence of all our holy fathers who have gone before us, the apostles, St. Basil the Great especially, St. John of Shanghai and San Francisco especially, our patron saints especially, whose names we bear as Christians. All these are the great cloud of witnesses, the company that surrounds us. This is what it is to be in the Holy Spirit. This is what it is to experience the kingdom of God come in power. That is what we are doing this morning on this day of the resurrection, as it's called in Russian, this Lord's Day, as it's called in most languages. Strangely, in English and German, they kept the previous Sunday. But still, it is the Lord's Day. And so the life in the Holy Spirit means we're no longer simply uh, figuring everything out for ourselves. You know, that's what happened before Christ. That's Amen. why there were wonderful men and women, uh, poets and sages, wonderful people like Plato, uh, philosophers who were really ascetics, who were people who were seeking God in some strange way. And in the Far East, of course, there were many others, as, as there are to this day, seeking God each in his or her own way. But when the fullness of time came, God sent his only son because God seeks us much more than we seek him. God loves us. Whether or not we even love him or hate him, God does not love as a particular attitude that, uh, the way we do because according to the Bible, to St. John, God is love. And therefore, love is not a disposition or a choice with God. It is natural to him. It's not contingent upon how we are. We don't serve God in order to be loved. We serve God in order to enter into his love. Because if you don't do that, as we know from human relationships, a person can be loved, but it doesn't necessarily impact, it doesn't impinge, they don't return the love. And so there is a big problem. And so in the life of the church, we don't make things up. We don't try to invent a new gospel. Even if an angel from heaven were to drop down and announce a new gospel, you would know this was an angel of darkness. St. Paul is very clear on this. 
We don't believe people who say, I have a theology here. I thought up something. I read something in the Bible, and clearly it means we all ought to be doing this. If this is something that has not been done for 2,000 years, then it, it's a bright idea from a smart aleck who may be very sincere. That's not to judge that person. Please understand that. It's not our place to judge any man or woman. But we don't follow that. It's clear from the Bible that many false Christs will come. And without necessarily uh, knowing why they're doing what they're doing, we know to be on guard. Because why? The Holy Spirit was not given just yesterday. The Holy Spirit's been given today and every day from the day of Pentecost within the church. That's why St. Paul can say, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. And that is why in the church, uh, things seem surreal at first. You know what I mean by surreal, that kind of movement in art um, between the two world wars, um, which sort of put things, uh, represented reality in, in a, a kind of strange way in order to make people look at things different, maybe. Um, but it's kind of like that when we come into the church. Things look different and they look weird. Another example, maybe more Christian, we're talking about the surreal movement in art, uh, is when the Lord healed the man who was blind. And initially he said, everything's upside down. I, it looks like trees are walking here. And the Lord healed him a bit more, and then he saw everything as it is. And so it is for us. What we think is normal is actually not. It's highly distorted. And when we're baptized and we come into the church, uh, we're beginning to see, but we think this is just totally weird. It's strange. I don't get it. Well, of course we don't get it, because you can only understand anything or anybody to the degree that you're in harmony with that person, right? I mean, how often we don't like somebody, and then we get to know them, and we say, actually, that was a, that's a very nice quality in that person, which before used to annoy us, you know. Um, and, and so in order to know and to understand, there has to be some kind of rapport, some kind of, as St. Dennis says, sympathy and on a profound level. And it takes time for us to acquire that. And so the things of, the, of God, when we see the kingdom of God come in power, seem very strange at first. It takes a while for our sight to become accustomed to the brightness of the light. <coughs> Indeed, Plato, in his famous episode in the Republic, writes about this. That when, when we come out of darkness, everything is very, very odd. Um, and people think that darkness is the real thing. St. John, and the, uh, we know from our Christian faith, this, this is exactly the case. That we come to Christ, it takes some time. And that is why um, orthodoxy is such a mysterious thing. It, 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 it's, you know, when people say explain, you, you kind of, well, you can say a few things, but you can't explain something that has to be experienced. You, you, can't, you can't just, at the click of the mouse, get it. The way if somebody said, I, I want to know, um, some foreigner says, I'm, I'm thinking of becoming an American citizen. And you could say, well, you could read the Constitution. Um, presumably that would tell you something relevant. But we won't, won't get into political issues at the moment. But, but it would be partly relevant, at least, to, to what it's like to live in, in, in our country, in this republic. Um, um, but you can't do that really with the things of God, even if you read the gospel, which would be a good thing to tell that person to do. But reading is only a beginning. You really can only read to understand. To get beyond the letter that kills is again in the Holy Spirit. And that is what it is. That is the joy. That's what brings us together. Um, whether or not we feel like it. Because sometimes, sometimes we're like the apostles at the end of John 6, like where else are we going to go? <laughs> you may not feel the joy of the Holy Spirit emotionally, in fact most of the time we don't, because human beings are, are full of all sorts of humours and waters and strange uh, you know, hormones and stuff, so our emotional state by no means represents our spiritual state. 
much of the time. Sometimes it does. Um, so whether we feel like it or not, uh, we, we find ourselves saying, well, what's the alternative? You know? Where else will I be nourished? To whom else shall we go but out as the words of eternal life? Saint the Lord says to Saint Peter says to Christ at the end of John 6. And that's why it's good for us to be here. It's good for us to venerate the cross. On the 14th, in the Holy Spirit, we all celebrate it. If we could get to church, it's best of all, but even if we couldn't, Christians all over the world on September the 14th, even outside of church, Christians celebrate this as Holy Cross Day, and we have a whole week of doing that. We still have the cross with the beautiful flowers. Because in the Holy Spirit, we know the meaning of the cross. And you know what happened uh, originally on uh, <clears throat> where this feast began was as I think if you've read the story of it in the announcements it's a good thing to do but, 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 but basically people wanted to people wanted to walk always in the, where the Christ had stepped people wanted to go to the holy places and the um, Emperor Hadrian the Roman Emperor very wisely from his point of view destroyed as much as he could he, he was on to something in a bad way, you know. And when the, uh, when the persecutions ended, uh, the Emperor Constantine deputed his mother, which is interesting, it's as if her feminine in, in instinct was called into play, to try to find what could not be found. And basically, uh, she inquired and inquired and inquired, and an elderly Jewish man which is also interesting, said, I think it's over there. And they dug, and we know that they found the nails and they found the crosses, the three crosses, the two that were crucified with Jesus and the cross of the Lord. And when they brought the body of someone who had recently died and placed it near these three crosses, the one, the man was raised from the dead. My brothers and sisters, this is the kingdom of God come in power. This is not human works. This is not something we can cop for ourselves. Christ said, you will see things. You will see angels ascending and descending. That is what we believe in orthodoxy. Someone who has no faith, without faith, is saying, ah, probably didn't happen. Or if it did, it meant something else. I mean, you know, nobody can be forced to believe. But when we have the eyes of faith, we see, like the man who thought things were upside down, gradually our eyesight sees reality, what actually is. And again, Plato would say, what truly is. Because we don't normally see it. And so these are crowds of people who beheld the man raised from the dead. And the Archbishop lifted up the cross so everyone could see. And that's why in cathedrals, the bishop, uh, there's a very long and beautiful ceremony in which he raises the cross many times. And people um, salute the cross and prostrate, which is what we're going to do later on. And then a little adjunct to this is 300 years later, the Persians overcame and conquered and they stole the relic of the true cross and eventually um, the Emperor Heraclius, Roman Emperor of Constantinople, managed to, uh, to get it back. And we don't know why he did it. Was it because it was false to his regime? Or was it because he truly was very humble that he carried the cross as emperor? stopped mysteriously and the, the patriarch said to him an angel stopping you your your almightiness your your majesty um, 
you can't carry the cross with your beautiful imperial robes on. And he took it all off. Whatever he had underneath, I don't know, or he put something on, common clothes, he could carry in. It's the same with us. It's the same with us. We're going to carry the cross of Jesus, which is what you heard in the gospel. If we're going to enter into the kingdom, we have to let go of our uh, all our delusions about ourselves. Right? That's a scary thought. But again, I want to say, look at the alternative. You know, do you, do you really want to go through life trying to convince everyone else about how wonderful you are in your delusions and get your own way? Because that's the default mode. Uh, isn't it much happier? Isn't it much more? childlike again like the little child standing next to his parent not to have any of those crazy things that we accumulate as we get older to be the child that can enter the kingdom of heaven to let go of all that so that should be our prayer as we stand together in the holy spirit begging the descent of the spirit in a few moments upon the holy gifts uh, that that the Spirit may descend on us and on these gifts and transform and make us truly children of the kingdom. <clears throat> We're so loved, brothers and sisters. He's good and loves mankind always, now and ever, and unto the ages. Amen.